Husbands and wives are one, just like Jesus and the church are one. Catch this. The lie of the enemy says that your needs aren't being met. You know, they just don't get it, and they probably never will. You're never going to be happy until you leave. That's the lie of the enemy. But marriage is about two broken people, imperfect people, entering in to a perfect and holy union. Eventually, you're going to run into some problems. I don't care who you are. Here's what the Bible says, Ephesians 5, verse 22 through 26. It says, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. And he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in every way. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify, and watch this, cleanse her with the washing of water and the word. And so I'm going to start with the husbands because I'm familiar with that role. (laughs) And so husband, your wife is your church. Hallelujah. Start thinking of her in that way. You can't take care of God's business here or anywhere else for that matter if your church at home is in shambles. She's your church before ever entering into this building. She's your bride. She's your church. She's the most important thing in your life besides Jesus himself. And so you have to love her like Christ loves the church. It's a sacrificial love, right? Jesus makes the first move in showing his love to the church. And the church responds to that love. And so you wonder why she's not acting in love towards you. It's because you haven't made the first move in love towards her. You want her to respond, you have to awaken the love inside of her. Go out of your way to understand and to give her what she needs. And stop thinking about yourself all the time. (laughs) Listen, I'm not going to pick on the men here, but we get caught up in our own world. You know, we have a different type of brain structure. And we're like, you good? You're good? All right. But, you know, they'll say yeah, but they're not always good, you know? And it said to sanctify her and cleanse her with the word. Hallelujah. When's the last time you cleansed uh, your wife with the word of God? How does Jesus speak to his church? I love you. I'm always here for you. You are blessed. You are healed. You are whole. Jesus sees the good, and he calls out the good instead of the bad, right? He covers the sins of the church. Wash her with the word of God. You know, tell her you are a woman of God. You are are worthy of the goodness and the mercy of God. You are a blessing to me and the kids, right? And don't come to this church and think that you are doing the will of God when your church at home is all broken and busted down. And you can tell the character of a minister by the type of of life he lives at home, by the condition of his family. And I know people have their own will, and it's not always the case. Listen. But I'm saying on the surface level, when, you know, things are going good and, and somebody's not losing their mind, You know, you can tell the character of a minister by the the condition of their home. Okay, now, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the Lord is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. And so men, they need to feel like they're 
effective leaders, right? That's how God created us. If you're a wife, the worst thing you can do is make your husband feel like he's an an inadequate leader of your family. Oh, that's the worst thing you can do. Even if you don't always agree, submit to him in reverence of the Lord, in reverence of the position he put him in over you. See and believe that there is a king in him, and the king will come out of him. Just like Judas, we look for purpose, and I'm done with that. We'll we'll get away from that. (laughs) But just like Judas, we look for purpose and meaning in everything else, you know? A career, a ministry, a calling, when all the while, it's right in front of us, in our honey. It's right in front front of us. Doing the will of God starts with your home life. Get your house in order. Your house should be your sanctuary. Your house should be a little piece of heaven to come home to. Not a piece of hell. It shouldn't be that way. The devil will try to get you to believe that you're never going to be fulfilled if you stay. But that's a lie. His glory falls on those who do stay. Amen? If nothing else, do it unto the Lord. And God will bless it. You just wait on how God will will open up your, your, your husband or your wife's heart. But the glory of the Lord comes when we stay. Don't leave before the miracle happens. Judas left and he missed the, the most amazing miracle of receiving the Holy Ghost. The world will do everything it can to convince you that you are doing the right thing by walking away. And we live in a world that loves to leave the moment their feelings are hurt. And so for the youth, I'm, I'm changing, kind of pivoting here. For the youth, don't buy into this cancel culture. The moment this generation hears something they don't like, they want it canceled. If it doesn't fit this certain narrative or worldview, we want it dead. We want it done. You know, we don't want to hear about it. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want to see it. And you know what's funny? Jesus didn't fit Judas' worldview. He didn't fit the narrative. So what did Judas do? He tried to cancel him. We're going to add a, a word to the dictionary. Jesus is uncancelable. Cancelable. <laughs> Hallelujah. He is the Alpha and the Omega, right? He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He will break out of every box that you try to put, in, put him in. And even when they tried to kill him, no grave could hold him. Nothing could get in the way of who he was. Nothing could get between him and his church. Hallelujah. And so the irony is that it said that the devil came into Judas. And from Jesus' teachings, he had the authority in Jesus' name to cast the devil out. He had the authority to cancel the devil. But just like Judas today, we are going around canceling everything else but the devil. Go figure. Too many young people are leaving the church Because of this lying spirit. It's a seducing spirit. The spirit of Jezebel. It's a spirit that is pretending to carry around love and acceptance for everyone. It's a false love that rejects the need of a savior. You know, you're you're perfect just the way you are. No, you're not. (laughs) Only Jesus was perfect. You need to trust in him. And so the spirit of Jezebel is a Babylonian spirit. When Babylon would take over a nation, they would enslave all of their strongest and their brightest 
young men and women with the most potential. And you had all different races and cultures coming together, yet they were still enslaved. Hallelujah. Today, the devil is after the strongest, brightest young people, the ones who are, are the most gifted, who have the most potential in Christ to do the greatest things for the kingdom of God, and he has seduced them with the things of this world. And instead of using what God gave them for his kingdom, they're out there using it for the world. And you need to rebuke that spirit over this generation. You need to rebuke that spirit over your children. Jezebel wanted to kill Elijah, right? The prophet of God. She wanted him canceled. But look how she ended up. Just to give you a little backstory, she was thrown out of a window, trampled by horses, and eaten, eaten by dogs, just like Elijah said she would be. And that is the end that the spirit of Jezebel brings you to. That is what becomes of the spirit of Jezebel. And so don't buy into the lie that says in order to be accepted, you have to accept, you have to celebrate people's sin. That it's okay because society says so. And Pastor Vinny, you know, you're starting to sound a little bit like a hater. I'm not a hater. I'm the exact opposite of a hater. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I love you enough so to not see you taken away by the spirit of Jezebel. Jesus loves the sinner. He loves the sinner. He died for the sinner. But he hates the sin. If sin was no big deal, Jesus could have just done detention. Sin causes death and separation from God. Sin caused God the Father to sentence his own son to death on a cross. Sin is a big deal. But here's the, 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 the truth of the matter. God loves you enough to die for you exactly the way you are. But like Pastor says, he loves you too much to keep you that way. And if you don't accept Christ as your Savior, as the one who redeems you from your sin... That sin in your life is going to kill you. It's going to lead you to the pit of hell. And, and so you're moving in more love when you call out right and wrong in their life than you are by just accepting what's wrong. And, and listen, I'm not trying to create this self-righteous youth group. I'm trying to tell you that there's a way to do it in love. There's a way to do it that, you know, we're all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect, but Jesus came and died in our place. He died so we don't have to experience sin in its full form, which is death. The Bible says sin in its final form is death and separation from God. In other words, hell. The good news of the gospel is that God sent his own son to die in our place, to carry your sin and mine on his shoulders. He took it and he nailed it to a cross. So you don't have to live in the shame of what you've done. You don't have to be bound by it any longer. Who the son has set free is indeed free. Amen? Amen. You have to believe that Jesus is who he said he is, that he is the Messiah, the Son of God, that he can take a sinful lifestyle and change it into something beautiful. He can take ashes and bring beauty from those ashes. Amen? That's the type of God we serve. There's transformation power in the Holy Ghost. In Christ, there is no male or female. There is no slave or free. There is no separation of ethnicity. We are all one in Christ. We are all brothers and sisters. You can't find that type of love and acceptance in the world. No matter how hard you look for it, you can't find that in the world. Why? Because it's from heaven. And that's how it's going to be in heaven. 
Everybody getting along. Everybody loving one another. Everybody serving one another. And having full of, being full of joy, full of peace, full of life. No war, no discord, no arguments. And, and how do you get to heaven? Only through the Son of God, Jesus Christ. And so if they want that in their life, if the world wants to see that, well, we got the answer, baby. And it's not about taking away your identity. It's about giving you a whole new one. One as a child of the living God.